I'm just going to step you through some of the exercises that we're doing. So I'm not really going to be um, doing more than just kind of explaining, for example, here. What we're actually doing is turning the one point uh, in either direction. And the arms are kind of moving in response to that. Um, what I tend to imagine is that I'm actually trying to draw the energy through like I'm kind of moving my arms through a treacle. On this technique here, we're, we're stretching through the, the key line which runs on the underside of the, the arm as it were, so from the elbow, you know, the, the line of the pinky, if you imagine that, and that is topmost um, when you're stretching the arm out above you, and the stretch is through that one point, uh, that, uh, the, the pinky and that key line running right up, and you'll feel that stretch go right down through your body, even almost beyond your knee. This exercise here is really um, about trying to stretch the body back. Now, I wish I'd actually done this to the side a little bit to let you see. You're not wanting to overextend on this one, um, especially going back where you will fall over. So it's finding what that correct point is that you can make the stretch without, um, without losing your balance. This is similar to the first exercise that we did. So again, we're turning from the one point, um, just a slight variation in the way that the arms are held. And that may or may not contribute to um, some other factor. This is very much a series of exercises that warms up and, and moves about the lymphatic system. When we're bringing our uh, ear down to the shoulder, be sure not to lift the shoulder if at all possible. I do find that difficult sometimes, but uh, yeah, just try and make sure that we're not uh, lifting the shoulder up to meet the, the ear. Um, Again, we're going back, go back far enough, but not so that you're then kind of creating a compression um, in the back of the neck and, and maybe making things less comfortable that way. And in dropping the, the chin to the chest, don't try and tuck the chin in, really try and extend the chin out and down. So, you know, let it do like almost a full arc and, and you can feel that stretch going up the, the back of the spine when you do it. Again, here, just as, as much of a natural stretch as you can possibly afford, and not raising the shoulders up at all, trying to maintain a good relaxed posture in the rest of the body. Up here on the toes, it really helps if your knees are slightly um, bent anyway. Um, it should be for all exercise that we do, especially in Aikido, uh, or particularly for me in Aikido. But yes, and in that exercise as well is just allowing the one point uh, to drop and the knees bend as a result. On this one, you're drawing the energy down, the knee that is out, uh, extended out to the side. You're, you think of the energy flowing out that way as you do the stretch. The other knee is actually bending forwards. Um, pretty bad posture for me in that exercise, it has to be said. Now these exercises are for really working the wrist. Um, and this is the, uh, the Kutagesh. And I'll actually demonstrate this um, a bit more thoroughly um, in a moment. So it's four exercises, it's four of these on either side. And uh, yeah, just before we move on to the next exercise, I'll take a little bit more in depth into that one. Great exercises. If you can get your fingers to curl back round to the underside of your forearm, I think you're doing pretty well. Um, I can do that but uh, it amazes me sometimes that I'm still capable. This exercise, again, if you look at it, it's running down through the middle of the body, bringing the, the arm down to the one point. There's a flex and a twist uh, in this technique, and there's a particular way that the, the hands should be positioned together to provide uh, a substantial enough stretch into the, the wrist uh, in this one. This is the Sankyo, uh, as we call it, and is, uh, is well worth doing, especially if you're practicing Aikido, because if you have that type of a stretch applied to you and you haven't warmed up, it can hurt for quite a while afterwards. Last technique that we've got, just as I have done there, placing one palm out, the arms are never locked, okay, but placing one palm out and then reaching the fingers over the top, and the thumb should be pressing into the back of the, uh, the front facing hand, if that makes sense to you. Again, you'll see this in more detail um, as I go through each of the techniques at the end of, of this short sequence. 
Again, we're doing four either side. Um, often here, my knuckles especially cracking when I'm doing this exercise. Um, so what we're doing here is we're shaking out the arms and the hands and the shoulders and the reason that I kind of demonstrated towards the um, the pinky there was that um, we're, we're shaking, imagine that you've got water on the edge of, on the end of your pinkies and you're kind of trying to shake it off, shake it off, shake it off and that's what we're doing there. Here we're, uh, you can see I'm dropping the arm down to the front and up to the side. The arm never goes behind the body. I'm glad that uh, my technique actually demonstrates that. <laughs> I'm often worried that I've um, I've allowed my arm to go behind the line of my body. And when you're dropping, I mean, really, it's, it's you're dropping the key down. Um, if you think of, it's, it's a difficult one to kind of explain, but in Aikido, I mean, really, you know, this is where my hand is going. It is going down. I am moving that energy, and that is really what that is. It may look like I'm just letting it fall and slump, but I'm not. There's a real intention to, I'm dropping my energy, my, you know. Um, and conversely to that, I'm raising and raising and raising my energy um, and it's really important to have this in Aikido I feel is to know when you know that you are you are drawing the energy down you are lifting the energy up if somebody's on the end of that um, you can see that we're, we're doing this now with the added dimension of, of bringing the knees into that exercise also oh and I disappeared for a moment there we are. Moving into the floor exercises. Um, I think I was just giving myself a bit of a stretch there, but uh, again, an upright position on the the, uh, the abdomen, the, the upper part of the body, stretching the toes forward and then bringing them back. Forward again, and back one more time. And we're going to do five stretches in each of this set uh, of floor leg work. And reaching the key I'm, I'm extending forward beyond i'm not trying to reach my toes i'm trying to extend as far as i can i can go beyond my toes that's great you may not go beyond your toes you may not reach your toes that's really not the important part in these exercises the important part in these exercises is extending forward is that feeling of extending forward now also in your lower abdomen you have the one point and i often think of that if you if you imagine you're you're sitting upright and then dropping your belly button down to the floor so arcing it down to the floor that's another way of kind of thinking to move within these uh with these various techniques i always think back to like primary school when i'm doing this exercise like something that we did in primary school as a stretch but i find it a very effective stretch now in this one i'm actually you can see my right arm is moving along my side and again i'm extending forward as far as i can i'm not trying to reach my toes um, a variation on this is to take the one of the very first exercises that we had when we uh, were stretching the the, the, um, the key line the pinky as your arm is coming up over our head so you can bring the arm up over the head and stretch that way and that really gives you you know uh, a, a good a good stretch right through the body in each of these points um, always making sure that when we are stretching as well that we are taking it to kind of a comfortable boundary um, so you don't want to be absolutely you know ripping the muscles out there we go so I've, I've actually taken the, the next step of this i'd forgotten i'd done that because this was like last july or august that i made this video and we're now in may of the following year um but i'm again reaching the um, reaching the key line of the pinky that runs right up through the elbow and the back of the shoulder and that's stretching then right down through that long side of my back and down through the uh, the left leg as it is at this point in time um Taking it a little bit wider, because we're repeating this exercise, but we do as much as we can try and uh, widen the uh, the legs a little bit, and uh, it just gives you a little bit more of a stretch. You're possibly not going to be able to reach as far as you could the first time around, and that's absolutely fine as well. You've just widened your stretch somewhat. Um, you can expect not to be able to reach as far, but with the same intention in each 
step of that exercise in all of the exercises. This way, <laughs> again, I would come back to dropping the belly button down to the ground. Um, I think moving my arms like that is more just a visual um, aesthetic as opposed to anything else. Really where my mind is, is in my lower abdomen at the one point, I'm a, you know, just below my belly button, and it's in trying to, you know, bring it as close down, sort of in an arc, in a, in a, yeah. If you think of an arch, you know, arching my, my um, one point down to the ground, and it's trying to get that distance closed as much as possible. Bringing our feet in together, the soles of the feet in together, and allowing the, the knees to um, kind of fall to the side. Um, cupping our hands around the outsides of the, the toes there, and allowing the, uh, the knees to, to rise and fall, just bouncing them gently. Uh, again, this out, to me is a really good one for opening up the pelvis, um, loosening off the hips, and just getting the muscles around there, and the, you know just all the joints and such kind of. Um, you can bring in or your feet up towards your um, up towards your groin more close and uh, it just again adds a little bit more of a stretch into the especially into the thighs uh, I guess into the what would that be the hamstrings um, and the, the quads as well now what we've done here is we've turned the uh, the palms or the, the back of the hands and towards each other and slid them down in between our um, touching feet soul to soul. Um, we're putting the the back to back hands in between the, the toes and we're dropping the chin down into where the toes are. Again this is about moving the one point down to the ground but we're dropping the chin down towards the hands as you can see and we're keeping our eyes up so we're always looking forward in this technique. Again, we're doing each of these things five times. The last stretch we've got is a big one for the quads um, and through the back as well. And I would exercise caution and common sense when you're carrying out this, uh, when you're doing this one. Um, various people can get to various points and it is just leaning back like that. I stretch out as much as I can just because it feels really good and you can see how arched my back is in this because each time that I do this there we go and so I relax down a little bit more I it's just the way I kind of tend to start the stretch it's almost done when I put my head down I'm almost arcing onto the top of my head and then that gets a little bit uncomfortable so I'll then relax my head down and that kind of just drops everything down a bit trying to keep the knees as close to the ground as you can and trying to keep our knees together as much as we can as well it all adds to just a really full-on stretch this last one just bringing ourselves up into a seating position now if you're going to do this next part make sure that you do have some sort of um, padding like a blanket or such underneath you um, because it can be pretty sore in the spine so it's worth having that this is a rolling technique it's fantastic for massaging out the spine we do this on um, you know sort of gym mats uh, in class um, and it is it's just a, it's a nice gentle exercise it's really important to be upright curl the spine curl the spine and upright again straight so each time that you're rolling back don't roll back onto a flat back you're not just falling backwards you are actually curling the spine into the the ground and bringing you can see bringing the base of the spine up above almost uh, in line i'm just showing here that after four of those we're swapping the feet over so if your left foot was in front bring it to the the back of the two and put your right foot in front or vice versa um, so what you want to be doing here is almost, you know, moving the entire body back in as one movement. It's not, um, you know, it's not pulling uh, the rest of the, you know, the legs up because the back is going forward. The whole thing moves sort of as, as one and comes back up to a seated position as one as well. And just coming up to standing there. So now I'm moving on to basically the um, at the very start of the the key stretches. Uh, we, we assume a posture, a position. Knees are slightly uh, bent as a result of dropping the tailbone slightly uh, and, and just tucking it in a little bit. Making sure our shoulders are relaxed, arms down by our side. All, you know, we're, we're 
upright, we're alert, and we're relaxed. It's a, it's a combination of these things that's vital to good practice. This stretch here is, is not part of the key stretches, but what it does is it opens up the shoulders and opens up the chest, and it's a, it's a good, you know, to, to have this combination of the, the foot stance, the, the feet positioning, the knees, and such, uh, is really quite vital to the, the full key exercise uh, and the practice. So this is for the um, Nikio, and I'm just kind of showing a more detailed example of what is happening. Um, the, the, the three fingers on the back of the, the hand, when the hand is drawn back in towards the body, those fingers act to stretch the... Um, those three fingers on the back of the knuckles act as a way to stretch out the fingers on the forward hand, let's put it that way, and bring them back round to the underside of the wrist. Um, if you've got greater flexibility, you can get those fingers to actually touch as the underside of the wrist, as I'm kind of demonstrating there. Okay, so this is the Kuregesh. Um, the pinky comes and cuts the wrist. That's what's basically is called is the, the, the key, that energy that I was talking about earlier on, the, the key line through the pinky, it is that powerful um, and can cut the, the flow across the wrist which is what it's designed to do. And then the thumb, basically between the, the ring finger and the pinky finger knuckles uh, on the back of the hand and as you come down there's a, a twist that naturally sets in to that motion and you kind of bring that whole combination right down to the one point just below the belly button. Just demonstrating here with the, the second hand, to see it from a slightly different angle. And um, very useful to, to stretch out the wrist using these three different exercises uh, when you are practicing Aikido. But I think also in general day to day, um, we use our hands an awful lot and I think it's kind of underrated as to, you know, just how um, valuable it is to ensure that there's a good, uh, you know, that everything's kind of limbered up and warmed up for the day ahead. So worth doing these three exercises on an as and when basis, not just restricted to doing the, the key stretches. And this is the Sankyo stretch technique. So this is more the stretches in moving forward. So as the hands come forward, you can see that the, the, the holding hand, as it were, this one coming over on the top, is taking, yeah, there we go. So demonstrating that slight twist there as you move the hands forward, you've got this slight twist. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. There's not really much more complicated to it. And I think that's pretty much everything. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.